The Ivory Coast exported $5.97 billion of cocoa and cocoa products, $1.72 billion of mineral fuels, oils, $1.71 billion of pearls, precious stones, metals, and coins, billions of dollars in fruit and nuts, millions in cotton, ships, boats, other floating structures. But the most famous export of the Ivory Coast is our next Toastmaster, <laughs> Lazar Lakadu. Lazar, <laughs> hang on, we'll, 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 we'll get, you, get you fired up in a second. He's got a speech title here. Lazar stepped in at the last minute. This is his first impromptu today, so don't tell him you lack preparation when you fill out the evaluation. Just judge the speech, baby. And speaking of his presentation, it is entitled, are you broke or rich? Join me in welcoming the <laughs> handsome export from the Ivory Coast, Lazar Lakadu. Thank you so much. All right, that was great. <laughs> well, last week, Linda Miller was supposed to be speaking today. She called me. She said, Lazar, can you replace me? I said, no, and I gave her an excuse. Say, no, maybe I won't be there at the meeting. But I knew for sure that I would be here, but I wasn't ready to speak. Please do not tell her, OK? Three days ago, my wife also asked me. She said, oh, honey, will you take my spot for this Friday? Uh, she's my wife, so straight. I said, no, I ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, I came over here, and the first thing that Smith, Black Smith, tell me, he said, do you want to speak? I mumbled something because I didn't want, and I left. I went to the other side. <laughs> Few minutes later, he called me. He came to me. He said, are you speaker number one or number two? <laughs> A tie down, you know. I said, okay, I don't want to be one, so two is better. So, yeah, I am. So, I'm not a pundit when it comes to financial world, but today I will give you, I will go in that space and give you my take. You know, when it comes to financial, there's four levels of financial success. The first one is financial dependence. The second, financial independence. The third, financial freedom. And the fourth, wealth. But for me, those definitions are a little bit too advanced for me. I want to break them down. So I put them in four categories. The poor, the broke, the rich, and the wealthy. Now. Before we decide to see if we are broke or rich or even poor, there's a definition that I want us to look into first. Because money is not the only indicator of our financial or our well-being. There's also what we decide our lifestyle to be. Somebody can be making a million dollars but you could be considered broke. Why? Because his lifestyle is so higher than his income. Another way, somebody can be making $50,000 a year, he could be considered rich. Why? Because his lifestyle is on the 40,000 and he's comfortable. So, I'll be making some definition and through those definitions you'll look at to see if you are broke, or rich, or even wealthy. You see, the first thing is to define what is my comfort level. What is my comfortable income? This is the first thing to decide. And sometimes we cannot even sit and really think of that. If I ask somebody, how much money do you want to make? Oh, I want to make a million. 
they don't even know what that one million gonna do. Instead of looking really to see what is my comfortable income. So the first thing is your comfortable income. And out from that you look at your actual income. Comfortable income, actual income. Now, if there is a difference between those two, you can see now where you are. Your comfortable income is less than your actual income, then you are on the side of either you poor or you broke. Now, the broke people are people who need that gap income, but they are working toward something. They either had a business or they're going to school. That's the reason why when you look at a student, they are the most broke people. They have no money, but they're broke. They're broke because they're working on something later on that will pay off. They don't have the money now, but it's coming. The poor on the other side, he has no money now. The only thing he has is opinion, and it doesn't really work that much. But they're working on nothing, right? So those are the things to define. Look at to see what is your comfortable income, what is your actual income, and find your gap income. I'll give you an example for myself. When you move over here, I realize that, you know what, my comfortable income and my gap income, the difference was uh, comfortable income and my actual income, it was just $1,000. That was my gap. I had to come up with that 1000 Ow! I didn't want to go back to work, full-time electrical engineer. That means I had to get up early, and I didn't want that. But still, that gap income is still there. I need to achieve that. What I did, I said, okay, I can get a car and then do some part-time job. But I get a car and uh, the insurance, all that come to again another $1,000. So I have $2,000 I have to come up with now. I did it because with that car, I don't have to wake up early and I'm making that $2,000, 1000 for the car and 1000 for that gap. I'm now level. You see, in that financial pursuit, one way to really get close to that is to be our own chair leaders. You know, for me, every morning when I get up, I go to the mirror and I give myself a pep talk. I look at myself in the mirror and I say, you know what? Lazar, a man with a dream. Lazar like I do things big. He believes big. His ideas are first class and he won't settle for anything less. From the clothes he wears to the way he cares, Lazar Lekadu is number one. Lazar Lekadu means drive, enthusiasm, progress, and fun. He's on the top and he's taking a leader with me. You see, those are the things that I keep on saying to myself. So remember, the magic that we are all looking for is in the work that we are all avoiding. So. Let's go back to work. Thank you.